Vater. Bitte vergeben Sie mir. Letzte Woche habe ich zwei Männer angeschossen, einen anderen aus dem Fenster geworfen und eine unanständige französische Hure angegriffen. Langsamer Woke, mein Kind. <lacht> oh, guten Tag. Dies ist die Geschichte von Charlotte und Bram. I'm so sorry. This is the story of Charlotte und Brandon. They love my TV show. Oatmeal, exercise, well, sort of. They both hate sleeping alone, beer, and hairy nipples. The good news is, they are a perfect match. The bad news is, they have never met. And Charlotte is with Stephen, while Brandon is with Ashley. Oh, um... Well, I can't marry you because I'm marrying somebody else in May. You don't even have a boyfriend. Uh, well... <laughs> Actually, I do. We've been together since high school for 14 years. It's just that he's been living very far away and now he's moving back so we can be together. 14 years? Sounds like commitment issues. No, it's just that he was waiting until we were both ready to... Why am I defending myself to a first grader? When it all falls apart, you know where to find me. Look, Lance, we've done all the graphics for your packaging and print ads at very reasonable rates. We created the signature look for Be Yourself Cosmetics. Now, it's great that your nephew's a whiz at Photoshop, but believe me, there is just so Screw much- Screw you, Lance, and your oxymoronically named product, and your mutton-headed fucktard nephew! Christ, are you off your meds? That's our biggest account! He's an asshole, Brandon. Asshole. Bro, I went to RISD with Seth MacFarlane. I don't need that shit! That asshole is paying off my student loans. Yeah, and our bills. Shit! You think you can get him back on the phone? I'm still here, you broke bitches! For you. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. You're a pretty decent drawer. Thank you. You know, I have been called the Vermeer of napkin art. Who? Did I leave my amethyst necklace at your place? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I saw it in the bathroom. Okay, remind me to get that from you. So, my boss gave us free tickets to the Chargers game Sunday. Wanna go? Uh, 4.05 on a Sunday. Okay. I'll try. Yeah, you know, I'm not really into drunk crowds and football and people. Of course. What does that mean? You know, I have dated guys with commitment issues. Lots of them. Pretty standard stuff, but you? I can't even get you to commit to a football game. Well, I don't like football. It's not that. It's everything. You won't go to Coachella. You won't move in together because that would be moving too fast. You won't even book tickets to a cruise next summer because a lot can happen in six months. Those tickets are non-refundable. And you're a cheapskate, which is why I thought you would like the free tickets in the first place. I'm not cheap. My money is tied up. And I can't go to the game because I want to start training for that Rwanda charity ride. You know, where people are dying? Yeah, like that's going to happen. Ashley. Ashley, what? OK. You're right. Uh, I I'm sorry. Let's do it, Ashley. You and me, Coachella next year. <sighs> Oh my God, you have to see this house. It has this entertainment room that would be so perfect for you to have your buddies over so you can watch your football matches. Football and then, games, not uh, matches. Um, anyways, there's a chef's kitchen, newly remodeled bathrooms. There's a study that would make a perfect nursery. Um, I think I'm, uh, maybe we should hold off on the house. Why? I just got here, you know, starting a, a new job. and There's a lot to figure out. But you don't have to figure us out, right? You do. Now, 
Charlotte, just wait a minute. No, 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 no. I am not waiting. I waited through college, through med school, and through your residency. That was the plan. I know, I know. And you have been so great through all of that. Is there someone else? Is it that Nurse Newcomb? No. No way. Well, then what is it? It's just uh, you. So predictable. What the heck does that mean? Up every morning at 6 a.m. You have the same honey nut oatmeal. You're off to work, back home, then in bed by 10 o'clock. You don't follow sports, sex, missionary position. With the lights off, there's no surprises. I'm bored out of my mind. Well, I didn't know it was so horrible for you. Well, that explains the engagement ring, the promise ring, and the pre-promise ring. Okay. 14 years, Stephen. In hindsight, I probably should have done this sooner. Did you bring me up here so that I wouldn't make a scene? Because I am gonna make a scene. I am gonna tell everybody in town. I'm gonna announce it. Okay, Charlotte, will you please just hey, calm down and hydrate, please? Don't tell me to hydrate. You jackass! <laughs> Steven? Are you okay? We find the defendant Charlotte Wells guilty of criminal assault and battery. If you complete community service, anger management classes, and probation, the felony charge will be expunged. Sentence is 30 days in jail. I live my life. I can tell you I live my life. Yes, sir, my fucker. Goddamn fucking shit prison. <laughs> I do mean, fuck all y'all if you can't appreciate. God, step off. Think you are fucking Princess Elsa? This is not goddamn Arendelle. Skinny ass bitch. She's a treacherous whore. You're better off without her. You're gonna give yourself a heart attack. What have you gone? A mile and a half. Shit, you're in terrible shape. I bought this bike so that I could get fit and do the Rwanda ride. You ever see me use it? No. The whore's right, Dan. I can't commit to anything, especially women. Which explains why I've had 50 girlfriends in the past 10 years. I can get them. I can't keep him. I want a lasting love, Dan. I want to be married. You have had a run of lousy luck with women. Luck's got nothing to do with it. It's me. It has to be me. I have to change, Dan. Come on, Jim. You stink. Let's go get a shower. now. You look great. You lost weight. Man, I want to go to jail. Oh, yeah. Everybody should. And it's so simple. All you have to do is spend half your life in a disastrous relationship and then commit a felony. Okay, none of which was your fault. It was all my fault. Look, okay. I read online that the average woman will have four serious relationships before she gets married. So at the rate you're going, you're not going to get married till you're like 84. You need to get right back on the horse. How? I, I have nothing to offer. 
Men just want some spontaneous, unpredictable sexual deviant. Girl, you are giving men way too much credit. They are simple beasts. All they crave is sex, sports, beer, food, and sometimes a little anal. Really? Really. Really? Really. Okay. If that is what men want, then that is what I'm going to give them. Except that last part, not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, we've all seen the makeover sequence, so I won't bore you with that. Banning, breeze, care of the balls, work the shaft. Yes! <gasps> you are now an expert on men. <laughs> all right. This is all the shit that he gave you over the last 14 years. Throw away, it's all online. And whatever the fuck this is. <laughs> yeah, he got this at an infectious disease conference in Shanghai. I kind of like it. It's, it's going. Yeah, this is disgusting. Oh, so you're a graphic designer. You must be really artistic. Well, I have been called the Vermeer of napkin art. <laughs> Wait, what are you watching? Oh, um, <laughs> it's this, uh, this silly show about this Swiss policewoman who is... Schweitzer Polizeifrau? You know it? Yeah, Friesendrecksack. <laughs> I binge watched all seven seasons in like six days. Yeah, I'm on season four. Oh, there's great ones coming up. We talked last night for four hours. And I think he's a really nice guy. Oh. Do you think I should tell him about Steven? If you never want to hear from him again, dating one guy your whole life might come off a little Sad. freakish. Like you were raised on a polygamous compound. Don't show him the woman you were. Show him the woman you're going to be. You mean lie? Hell yes, lie. Don't tell her you have 56K in student loans. Tell her you have a 10 inch slong and you're the heir to the Walmart fortune. It's the internet. If you're not lying, you're not trying. Hey, hey! My last boyfriend, uh, let's see, um, I was with him for 14 months. Wow, so brief. Well, how long do your relationships normally last for? Uh. You know, two, three years. So you haven't been with that many women? A handful. You know, for me, it's more about quality than quantity. My biggest fault? Sometimes I give too much, you know? 
whether it's work or relationships, I'm, I'm all in. Kind of a warp speed ahead kind of guy. And sometimes I'm so spontaneous and unpredictable that people find it exhausting, but I'm working on that. I mean, maybe because I'm country, but there's nothing like a cold brewski, right? Hell yeah! Steelers, baby! Big Ben is my boy! The San Diego Superchargers! Well, you're looking at the two-time salsa dancing champion of West Virginia. Look, I'm not saying I'm Lance Armstrong or anything. I'm kind of on the level just below him, but cycling is my passion. God, your food looks amazing. Where did you learn to cook? Oh, please, look at you, making your own pasta from scratch? You have beautiful eyes. Well, you have a very sexy smile. Salud. Salud. Oh, oh, God. Hey! Ah, no, no, I, no, it's not what you think. I just, I didn't have time to, uh, to get dressed before. And me too. Hmm. I want you. Come to LA. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for the ticket. Look, I want you so bad, but I looked into tickets. They're $700. Or we can split it, uh, if it feels like I'm coming on too strong. This is gonna be so amazing! So that's the Getty Villa, right there. J. Paul Getty was the world's richest man, but he had a payphone for all his house guests. Oh, God, what a cheapskate. I hate that. Yeah, me too. Hey, isn't that that restaurant where all those celebrities hang out? Yeah. Have you ever been there? Sure. Oh, man, I bet it's amazing. Chilly, huh? Yeah. Wanna head back? Sure. Or we could jump in the water. <laughs> yeah, right. <gasps> no, I'm serious. Come on, Cheryl. You just had a five-course meal. You're not going for a swim. No, come on. Let's do it. I've never even been in the ocean before, and it would just be like absolutely hey, crazy. Hey, hey, listen to me. We're not jumping off the pier. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, you are completely insane. Really? Yes, you're crazy. You are the most exciting guy I have ever met. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right, Carly, let's see what you got me. How does, I, I don't even, I don't even understand that. <laughs> I've seen thicker dental floss. <sighs> you are one sexy bitch, Charlotte. And you've had sex with a thousand men, with a hundred men. Twenty-three, eight, eight. You're gonna go in there, and you are just gonna be a super sexy lady. God, I look like my mom with these things. Ugh.
my gosh, I'm so sorry. See, like a rough. Huh? Oh, no, I just Because I can be really rough. Oh, yeah, no, I'm rough. I'm like super rough. Like, like, like this kind of rough. Ah, ho! Going for the uh, sexy proctologist, huh? Yeah, no, I dig that. Yeah? Is that all you got? I mean, you're in luck because his two friends just decided to join the party. Ah! What are you thinking? I was just thinking. Um, I was just wondering if it's too soon to tell him that um, he's just the kind of man I've always wanted to be with. Confident and um, unhesitating, sure of what he wants, extremely handsome. Well. <laughs> And, um, it's gonna break my heart to get back on that plane. Well, that's funny, actually, because I was just thinking that she is the most exciting and spontaneous person <laughs> I've met in my entire life. <laughs> Not to mention gorgeous. Absolutely. Bombshell. <laughs> knockout. And blonde, too. Most blonde person. <laughs> and I was actually wondering if it's too soon to give her this. And to tell her that I love her. insanely fast, but she's not like the women here. Is that a heel mark? She's, she's sexy and smart, and we just have this, this connection. What did you get on the upholstery? Oh, that's just salt water. Is that what you kids are calling it? You desecrated the stang. Dude, I'll get it washed in wax. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm in love. I can clearly see that you're excited, and I'm mm. very happy for you. Yeah, really, I am. OK, yes. You might want to keep this for your scrapbook. Oh, yes. That's your neck. Just smell it. Just no, smell it. No. It's just the neck. It's not. It's a neutral zone. It's not appropriate. Oh, God, that's good. And did you do the things that we talked about? Oh, we did things that no one talks about. Oh, and how did that go? He gave me this. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he told me that he loves me. <laughs> Oh my God! I know, and I told him that I loved him too, which I know seems really like crazy and rushed, but it was just so magical. That no good mother. <sighs> well, you know what? Good for him. Good for him. He. He deserves to be happy, Char. You know, he deserves, I know what you're gonna say and I'm gonna be fine because, because I'm happy and he's happy. Charlotte! And everybody's happy. Charlotte! And it's gonna be oh my God! Asshole. No, you can't cause an avalanche just by yodeling. No, I am telling you, it is completely possible. You can't, you can't. And even if you could, you can't make it fall right on a fleeing bank robber. Schweizer police, Frau Can. Yeah, well. Hey, I made something at work today. You mind uh, taking a look? Yeah, sure. Hey, is that me? Looking good. Thing ever. It would 
be the ultimate commitment. We want a divorce. Between the two of you? Yeah. Well, I'll be usually I represent only one party's interests. We have the same interests. An immediate divorce. Well, then, I reckon we ought to discuss dividing property, assets. We don't have any. How long you two been hitched? 10, Ten days. days. 10 days? Carly. Thanks, Carly. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> oh, and that is from us. Oh, thank you. Mm. Aww. Thank you very much. That's so sweet, Jerry and Judy. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. That's, uh... No, the people of Tibet thank you. It's such a noble gesture in your name. So it has none of the bourgeois cachet of a shiny kitchen appliance. Anyway, speaking of exotic places, have you guys finally decided we're going to take your honeymoon? Not yet. Uh, I start teaching really soon, and we have to find a bigger apartment. Or maybe a house. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, we have to put that on hold. No, 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 you must do something special, Brandon. Sri Lanka is lovely. Ooh. As far as uh, exploited, underdeveloped island nations go, it's really the sad teardrop of the Indian subcontinent. But the beaches are beautiful. Well, that sounds fun, right, honey? Oh, yeah. It's a shame about all the tsunamis. I tell you what, though, for special, there's some great spots right within driving distance. I mean, you know, San Diego, Santa Barbara, Pismo. Oh, what about you? Where did you, where did you two go on your honeymoon? Jail. <laughs> He's not kidding. After we exchanged our vows, we went off to a no-nukes rally. She acted up. Oh. And the po-po picked us up and threw us both in the slammer. So you spent your whole honeymoon in jail? We'd only known each other for 10 days, so every minute we spent together was like a honeymoon. Mm. And we actually managed to slip a little connubial bliss in right under the man's nose. So we're in the adjacent cells. All right, and right after all the other inmates went to sleep, my beautiful bride, she backed her tight little rump right up against the bars. Oh. I dropped trow, and we made the sweetest, sweetest love. Oh, oh, Christ, I need a drink. Now, being an only child and losing both my parents, I, I definitely want a big family, like, like three or four kids. You know, they say it costs a quarter of a million to raise a child, and that's before college. You just, you can't put a price tag on happiness. True, but uh, I was an only child, and um, I, I have to say, I was very happy. Oh, come on, Brandon. You used to always want a younger brother. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Brandon was an accident. We thought long and hard about whether or not we should keep him. You were going to put him up for adoption? Oh, God, no, I wouldn't have the heart for that. We were going to abort him. Jesus. But we were in Burma. We couldn't find anybody to perform the procedure. Thank God. I think we made the right decision. I do, too. Most of the time. <laughs> oh, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, we better get going. We got a flight to catch. We got to get to Buenos Aires. Oh, leaving so soon. <laughs> We're going to Antarctica. I'm gonna scuttle some Japanese whale killers. If it were up to me, I would have those boats sunk in the ocean and have any remaining survivors fed to the sharks. I hear you. I respect your feelings. Now get your things. We gotta go. We're gonna be late. Charlie, it's been so lovely meeting you. Likewise. Carly, till next time. Okay, let's go. She gets so bloodthirsty when it comes to the Japanese. <gasps> Those are some weird fucking people. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. They're unique. It, it's kind of refreshing. You need to be thankful that their DNA skipped a generation. <laughs> God, isn't... Brandon's pretty amazing, right? You did good, girl. And he can't freak if he finds out that you're a jailbird. 
Because with parents like that, he was probably conceived in the joint. Why would you tell Charlotte the Stang is yours? You're the one who told me to lie. When you're trying to lure her to the honeypot, you can't keep it going now that you're married. It's insane. Just let me break it to her slowly, OK? Can you, can you go along with it for a couple more weeks? Come on, man, you have another car, please, I'll owe you. With what? You don't have any money. Which you also told me not to tell her about. And now she's talking to me about honeymoons and houses and kids. You screwed up, man. You took my advice. OK, 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 OK. You can take the Stang for a couple of more weeks, yes. but, but if I see you drive in more than twice, I will bring down your house a car. Understood, thanks. I'll see you at dinner. No, this is yours now. You have to take care of it. What? Oh! <laughs> Our first dinner party as a married couple. Yeah. What are you making? Well, I thought maybe you could make your homemade pasta. <laughs> like, I remember on our honeymoon, we went to a movie in Maui, and Dan was playing with his wedding ring. It fell off and rolled on the floor. Ting, 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 ting. We had to wait till the movie was over and then search through all this popcorn and crud and found it in a puddle of Pepsi. She was really mad. And then the next week, he does it again. Well, and she punched me right in the neck. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't divorce you. <laughs> it turns out you done it intentionally. What? Well, yeah, so I had tied it to a string and I was pulling it along and she kept falling afterwards. <laughs> it was really nice. <laughs> right after it. Oh my God, weren't you furious? Yes. <sighs> but then I realized that this is who Dan is and that's why I love him. That's why she loves me. He's a lovable jackass. My ass is very jacked. Moving <laughs> <laughs> on. Okay. Okay. Brandon, what is your biggest regret? Um, my choice of best friends. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. Um, uh, I guess maybe not visiting my grandpa enough before he died. He was living in this nursing home like a mile from our house and uh, I don't know, I guess I was just too busy being a teenager or something. Um, anyway, I hope he forgave me. Of course he did. I mean, he knew you loved him. Okay, I'm gonna say what we're all thinking. Four way. Hey. Uh. Hey, how come you never wore that necklace I gave you? Don't you like it? I love it. I uh, I absolutely love it. You know what else I love? That pretty little ass of yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that three amigos? No, so many amigos. What are you working on? Welfare application. You? A suicide note. Touche. Looks good. I guess I'm gonna call that slimy prick Matthew and see if he'll throw us a bone. Oh man, that's gonna suck. You just know he's gonna make you feel like a pathetic, shit-eating failure. I'll call for you. I'm just so glad I found it. I had to go to 10 different stores, and it cost $1,200. Oh, at that price, I think I would just come clean. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to, but uh, he spent so much money on it, and I don't know, he just, he picked that himself, which I think is really sweet, so. So, you must be looking forward to getting back to work, huh? Yes, I am so excited to be back in the classroom with kids. It's gonna be nice to have income coming in, too. Speaking of which, I was thinking that we could start planning our honeymoon. You know, maybe uh, go on my spring break. What do you think about Aruba? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But what about Catalina Island, huh? It's 26 miles across the sea. It is beautiful. It's, uh, I mean, it's where Natalie Wood drowned. 
Sounds romantic. Hey, you know what? I think we have to have a couple drinks tonight. Yeah? To celebrate your last couple of days of leisure. What do you say? I like that. Here, let me do that. All right, get out there. Make me proud. Show me some of those tricks. Achtung, ladies and gentlemen. He's about to shame, bruise, and soil himself. Oh my god! Brandon, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, no, I meant to do that. Oh god. Brandon, got you a little something for the newlyweds. Oh, Mel, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Shots. To all your lucky students. To my sweet husband and all my bros and hoes. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, can I get Charlotte Conroy on the dance floor? What? Did he just say my name? I guess. What did you tell him? Yeah, everyone, put your hands together right here. Miss Charlotte, the dancing machine, Conroy, salsa champion, world champion in the house tonight. It's you. What did you tell him? I may have exaggerated a little bit. I know you didn't want to show off at the wedding, but now I get to see your stuff. That is all the salsa Charlotte knows. But tragically, she dances on. The asshole who almost smothered me to death. Actually. You would still hang out here, you cheap bastard. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I come here too. Ashley, uh, I am. You are not still mad at me, are you? Okay, Charlotte, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> A very interesting dance. <laughs> hey, honey. Who's your friend? Ashley. Charlotte. Charlotte Conroy. What's that, your sister? No, his wife. I'm sorry, you're married? Since when? Four days ago. We used to date until he went all feigning goat on, what the fuck? That's my necklace. Oh shit. What the hell, Brandon? Brandon? Yeah, I left it at his place. He never gave it back to me. Is that true? Told ya. Okay, this isn't your necklace. The hell it isn't. Oh, okay. uh, no, listen, your necklace I ground up in the garbage disposal. Bullshit. Listen, I was freaked out because I found out my ex-fiance got married. Ex-fiance? Okay, like, you have the right to speak. You gave me this skanks necklace. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, this is hilarious. You wanna know what I think? <sighs> Can you hear me talking do anything? Uh, stop! Look at it this way. Most women our age have a lot of wear and tear on them, but you got her from the original owner. She's in mint condition. Anyway, you really trumped her on that necklace debacle. What were you thinking? I don't know, man. That never the twain shall meet. Okay, once when Rita and I were married for maybe two months, she asked me if this dress she was wearing made her butt look big. I told her, yes, but I like big butts. You know, I'm a black man. It nearly ruined us. But it didn't. Uh, it took some work. And that's what you gotta do, man. You gotta make some sort of grand gesture, all right? S something repentant and sweet, maybe a little pathetic thrown in there. And with any luck, it'll all be forgotten about. In a few years. Come on. God, it was so humiliating. So you both screwed up. You each take a gimme and move on. Just got an email from him. Oh my 
gosh, it's so sweet. He just sent me the cutest apology. Hey, he's a peach. Do something nice for him tonight, like really nice. Did you get that link I sent you? Oh, that site was nasty. Exactly. This is ridiculous. They've been making this racket for hours. What in the hell are they trying to prove? Dan, maybe you should come to bed. Yeah, yeah, uh, in a minute. Mama say, mama say, it's the right to let you up. A winner's one of those days. And no, don't let it miss you go. Like the love, like the love. Been a few so right. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that was incredible. Okay. I gotta pee. Oh. oh. Ah. I'm sure it's nothing serious. You haven't had problems down there before, have you? Never. Brandon Conroy? Hello, Mr. Conroy. Hi. I'm Dr. Sani. Oh, yeah, I normally see Dr. Kurtzman. Oh, he retired five or six months ago. This is my first week. Huh. Welcome. So, what's the problem? It's like someone took a sandblaster to my boomstick. Let's have a look. Oh my god. This looks like something I saw in my tropical disease seminar. How long has it been like this? Just since this morning. And before that, was your penis normal? Or has it always been disfigured? No, normal. It's normal. Do you work with toxic chemicals? No. Have you recently spent time in the African bush? No. Have you had sex with any prostitutes from that region? No. Any exposure to monkey feces? Monkey feces? So no interspecies intercourse? Oh, for fuck. No! Mr. Conroy, I am going to need the names of all your sexual partners. Get Dr. Palmer down here right away to look at Mr. Conroy. We have a possible miasmic STD of unknown origin. Is it that serious? He's had sex with 21 women in the last four years. Uh, go, go. Go. I've never seen anything like this before. It's like a mix of genital herpes, syphilis, and a gunshot wound. Maybe it's a mutant hybrid. You asked about monkey feces? I did. And negative. Sterile swab. Whoa. What's up with the swab? I'm gonna insert this into your urethra, get a culture, run a test, and see if we can't figure out what's going on with you. Okay? Wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay, we got another one. No, that's good. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> Come on, three second rule, right? It's okay, let's try this again, shall we? Please, no. Oh, sweetie, thank God you're here. How are you doing, honey? They don't know what I have. Mm. Well, I'm sure everything will be okay once they figure out which one of your 21 sluts gave you the disease. Whatever happened to quality over quantity? The numbers don't matter. I always wore condoms. 
He slept with you. Oh, please. I only slept with one man for 14 years. But who did he sleep with, huh? Oh, you were so full of shit. <clears throat> I'm his wife. Oh, yes, I imagine so. I'm Dr. Dietz. Now let's see what all this excitement's about. You already checked for monkey feces, right? Mm -hmm. I did. <sighs> Mr. Conroy, you have cystitis. Oh, God. Shit. Commonly known as honeymooner's disease. From too much intense sexual activity. You just need to give the little fella rest, avoid sex for four or five days, only touch it when absolutely necessary, and you'll be right as rain in no time. Oh, thank God. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, thank you. You can put that down. I'm sorry. So let me get this straight. They swabbed your schlong twice, yet they didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. That is marriage in a nutshell, isn't it? <laughs> Mrs. Halverson, I was just getting ready for tomorrow. I'm afraid there's a problem. We just received your background check. You were arrested for a felony. But I, I received a deferred adjudication. I wasn't convicted. I was still able to teach in West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we hold a higher standard here at Van Nuys Christian. I'm an excellent teacher. I've been teaching I'm sorry. for... Maybe if you hadn't been dishonest, but we're going to have to terminate your contract. I I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't mean to lie. I was just trying to make a good impression. <laughs> Don't apologize to me. Apologize to Jesus. You're still upset about what happened yesterday, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, no. I, look, we've both made mistakes, and I, I don't think we should judge each other for things that happened before we met. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. The past is, is the past, and, and we should just be looking forward to the road ahead together. At least it's all out in the open now. Look, I want to tell you, I need to tell you that I agree 100%. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is one of my favorite episodes. Have you seen this one? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Oh, no, this is a classic. Sie sind verhaftet, Drecksack. Schweizer Polizeifrau. Ich hätte mich in sie verlieben können. Ich liebe nur das Gesetz. Ah, I won a golden Heidi for that episode. I'll be right back. Packed your lunch for you. Oh my god. Where did you find this? Ah, I made it. Knock him dead, honey. I feel like such a scam artist. I'm not built for this kind of deception. Okay, well, why don't you just find another job real quick and then tell Brandon you got a better offer? Well, finding one's not the problem. I have an interview at 12. I just, I mean, what's the point? They're gonna vet me too. 
No one wants to let some low-down ex-con near their children. Hmm. No, oh, I got it. Okay, your middle name is Lauren, right? So why don't you spell it L-A-U-R-A-N instead of E-N, and then your record won't come up. Would that really work? I don't know. What do you got to lose? You know what? Nothing. You're right. You are absolutely right. I Thank you so much. You are a total genius. It's my car won't start. Oh, okay. Why don't you just call Brandon real quick and then Let's ask him. call Brandon and ask him to take me to a job interview when I'm supposed to be at a job that I already have. Oh, goodbye. Shit. Shit. Take the best of me if it sets you Hey, Charlotte. Free. Hi, Dan. Teaching first grade, volunteer for the Red Cross, Girl Scout Camp Summer Leader. Uh, oh, you went to UWV. Yeah. Proud Mountaineer here. You too? Teal Pride. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is Professor Vasek still there? Oh yes, I loved him. He was he was amazing. Well. I know you had an excellent education. <laughs> Actually, Mrs. Newton, uh, there's something that I need to tell you. Um... Hey, Brandon. Hey, bro. <sighs> Look, there's no easy way to say this, man. A senior project manager over at Plan C is moving to London, so Matthew called and offered me the job. What can I say, man? I'm, I'm a weasel. I'm a weasel and I'm a sellout. Oh, thanks. No bullshit, I, I fought for you, I swear, man. Look, I'm, I'm old. I got alimony payments up the wing. You can still use the office if you want. No, it's your garage and all. Yeah, and uh, so I just I wanted to be completely upfront. I appreciate your candor, Charlotte. And I like to think that we're a little more forgiving than the Christians over at Van Nuys Christian School. So, I'll get back to you. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I am. I need to report a, a stolen car or a missing car. I, I don't know what, where it is. Um, I, I don't know the license plate number. Look, it, it's a Mustang. It's really old. It's a. Uh, uh, I mean, there can't be that many of them. I, look, I was really hoping that maybe you could help me find this car before my husband finds out that it's missing. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Call Brandon Conroy. Girl. No, stop! Stop! Girl! Hey! Girl, are you okay? Charlotte! 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 Dan? Dan, something horrible has happened. What? Brandon's Mustang was stolen. No, not the Mustang. Yeah, he is gonna be furious. Did you call the police? Yes, and when I didn't know the license plate number, they just laughed at me. Do you, do you happen to know the number? Yes, I do. Ah, why does he have that stupid car anyways? But I thought you loved it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun to cruise around in sometimes, but I mean, come on, it's ridiculous. It's just some loud, gas-guzzling, middle-aged mobile for men with tiny dicks. Come with me.
Charlotte Conroy, I need to see her. Oh my god, they brought it back. No, I had a GPS tracker on it. Oh my god, oh my god, Anne, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh god, you totally saved my life. Wait, why do you have it? It's mine, it's mine, Charlotte. It's always been mine. It wasn't stolen. I just took it back. But the car belongs to Brandon. No, it doesn't. It, he borrowed it from me. I, I guess he was trying to impress you. Why would that impress me? Um, I don't know. Maybe because it makes him look cool and a little less broke. Brandon's broke? I, I shouldn't say anything. I'm so sorry. I... He's worse than broke. He's in, like, debt. Calamitous, crushing debt. You know what? You know, I'm glad I'm saying something. This is for his own good. <sighs> I feel better. Charlotte no longer works here. <laughs> what? We had to let her go. She has a felony for assault and battery. It's shocking that someone so well-mannered could be so vicious. What's up with that phone call today? Oh, uh, sorry, my, someone almost backed into my car. Oh. But you're okay now? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's good. So how was work? Good day with all the kids? Yeah, great. How about you? Make lots of money? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, your Aunt Sally Mae wrote, she'd like her $56,000 back. Why are you going through my mail? Well, don't you mean our mail? Dear, we're married and we share everything, including a buttload of debt. Huh, you want to share? Okay, let's share. Tell me about the felony you committed, darling. What? You know, that thing you lost your job over. You don't understand. No, I think I do. Assault and battery. It's right there in the title. Pretty self-explanatory. It was my ex-fiance. Oh, well that should help me sleep at night. It was an accident! And you know what? I wasn't convicted, and at least I paid my debt to society, unlike you. Student loans aren't a crime. They are if you don't pay them. Whoa, please don't stab me with your shave. They'll send you back to the joint, sweetheart. At least there, you know who people are. Then why don't you call your warden and get your old bunk back? I have let a lot of shit slide. Like what? You don't know the first thing about cooking. Philip Seymour Hoffman is not the quarterback for the San Diego Chargers, and you, sir, are no Lance Armstrong. Three words, salsa, dancing, champion. Oh, and how long did you think that you could pretend that stupid car was yours? Goddamn, Dan. And the worst part, the worst part is that you made me look like an idiot in front of Dan and Rita, the, like, the only friends that I have in this miserable place. Hey. You make me look like an idiot, too. I didn't know who I married. Are you this, this sweet, adorable school teacher or some deranged drifter come to ruin my life? Well, if you really feel that way, then maybe, maybe, maybe we should just both admit that we made a mistake and then just split ways. You know what? Maybe we should. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Fine. 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 How long you two been hitched? 10 days. 10 days? Are you celebrities of some sort? No. Peculiar. So, how do we get this thing started? Well, first of all, let me be clear. I'm acting as a neutral third party, helping to negotiate a fair settlement. There's nothing to negotiate. We're in complete divorce agreement. That's the only thing we're in agreement on. Fair enough. I'll drop the contract, and you all can come by next Thursday and sign it. Thursday? Why not today? 
Uh, don't you have any generic forms lying around, like uh, divorcezoom.com? Generic forms? Here, divorce is unique, regardless of race, religion, or sexual preference. Now, how would you like to handle my fee? We'll split it. You got that much, or do you need to get another loan? You sure Thursday's the best you can do? So, where are you staying? What? It's my apartment. I gave up my job, my home, and my best friend for you. I'm not leaving the apartment, and I'm not paying you rent. Well, you better start cooking or cleaning or, you know, doing something. Asshole. And your car sucks. Watch you wake up in the morning Forgetting the love from the night before Was it whiskey who kissed me And promised to be my lover forevermore I thought that it was you Was I wrong? Have I longed for you too long? Sorry for loving you, darling, I'm moving along. I'm so sorry, Char. Men are such turds. Said I'm sorry for loving you, darling, I'm moving along. On y va. Non, non, on attend les renforts. Organise simplement quatre ambulances. Non, ils sont cinq. Je sais, c'est Noël. Je suis de bonne humeur. And then what you want, I think you want to subtract the top number from the other one you got right there. Okay. You got it. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Sue me for loving you, darling. I'm moving along. I said, Sue me for loving you. I'll just be moving along. Freeze and break suck. and drag sack. Have a great day. Don't work. Love you. All I want to do is be good to you and you say you don't know if you want it. If you want me to be back. No, I haven't done much. Um, any animated porn, but I am a fast learner. And I love animation. And porn. So, win-win. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, please keep me in mind. Thank you. Me for loving you, I'll just be moving along. Surprise! Surprise! Oh. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, son! <laughs> wow, uh, I didn't expect... Uh, how is Antarctica? Amazing. Your mother was the hero. She devised a scheme to foul the prop of the niche in Nauru. And your father was shot in the balls by one of the Japanese deckhands. Right. With rubber bullet. It swelled up like coconuts. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Looking good, boy. So good to see you. Yeah. Looking good. Hey, what'd you tell them? About what? About us, about the divorce. When? They haven't stopped talking since they got here. Oh, thank God. You're gonna have to tell them. Well, not tonight, it's my birthday. Plus, it's humiliating. Their marriage has lasted 32 years, and it's lasted about as long as a Hobbit movie. Happy birthday, son. My charitable works continue, I see. What's this? Two tickets to Tahiti for an all-inclusive stay at Brando. It's a luxury eco-resort. I could have been a contender. <laughs> because my son and his beautiful bride deserve the absolute best honeymoon that money can buy. Speaking of honeymoons, you know, your father and I are undergoing a bit of a second one right now. Let's just say we're experiencing a refreshed sense of sexual energy. Mm. <laughs> it's exploring our aging bodies. So many delicious new cavities to explore. Well, it's a very thoughtful gift, and I, I, I thank you very much. It's thoughtful, isn't it, Charlotte? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Okay, let's have a photo. Hold up your present. 
This isn't the Middle East peace talks. How about a kiss? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> I'm sensing a little bit of disharmony. I'm sorry, I'm just feeling a bit, um... Yeah, I know. Is it Brandon? You know, because he's a sweet boy, but he can also be a massive pain in the ass. <laughs> Trust me, I know. No, it's not just him, it's just that we... You know, we both weren't as... honest as we should have been. <laughs> well, I remember when Jerry and I met. He thought I was a Democrat and a virgin. <laughs> the truth is, I was in love with Reagan and I'd slept with half the boys in the neighborhood. <laughs> so you... Well, I told him what I thought he wanted to hear, which was not the truth. I... You... Lied, yes, guilty as charged. <laughs> but when I met him, I knew he was special. So all of this nonsense just came babbling out of me. And how did you...? I eventually found the courage to tell him what was in my head and in my heart. And that's been the glue of our relationship from that day forward. You sure you don't want some of this? It's Peruvian hog's breath. They grow it above tree line. Sweet. Nah. I'm good. Thanks, Dad. I'm not really in the mood. Why so glum, Sonny Jim? I don't know, Dad. Marriage is hard. <laughs> you have a keen grasp of the obvious. I think mine was just a bad idea from the start. Brandon, not a day goes by that I don't ask myself, did I do the right thing marrying that woman? It's not very romantic, Dad. It is when the answer is always yes. Are you okay? Yeah, Mom. I know. I'm fine. I just have a headache. That's all. Oh. I think I got something for that. Oh, you've always got something for something. Great. Why do you have a DEA property room around your waist? Oh, I would love to make this bust. Window pin acid, peyote, shrooms, mescaline, ecstasy, hashish, and Viagra. It's our mobile first aid kit. Recently replenished at Tierra del Fuego. You know, they have a very enlightened attitude towards psychotropics. Here it is. Ginger root. Yeah, Dad, you got any Advil? Advil? That's fucking poison. Oh, shit! Oh, God. What? Good morning, Charlotte. This is Bonnie Newton from the Culver City Charter School. Is this a good time? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Hi. Good. Well, we're having a gathering this afternoon with some of the board. I thought it might help your cause if you attended and demonstrated to everyone what a solid, upstanding young woman you are. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love to. Thank you. Well, we West Virginia gals have to stick together. <laughs> I'll email you the details. Okay, great. Oh, 
uh, and bring that charming and supportive husband of yours. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I will see you there. Thanks. Bye. First, you want to tell my parents we're getting divorced, and now you want me to go to a garden party and pretend we're happily married? Brandon, just please. If, if I get this job, then I'll have enough money and I can move out. Okay. That makes sense. So nice to see you again. Oh, Charlotte. Hi. So glad you could make it here. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Uh, Mrs. Newton, this is my husband, Brandon. Hi. Very nice to meet you. And this is our host and the head of the board, Dr. Glenn Wooster, and his mother, Lillian Cavendish Wooster. Nice to meet you. You know, Charlotte has been teaching first grade for over eight years. You don't find it challenging to be around children all day? Oh God, no. Um, I, I mean, I just I love kids so much. They're they're so honest and, and entertaining. I I have this one student, Emily. Every day, anywhere she went, she always had her two Barbie dolls at her side. And uh, on her birthday, I asked her what she wanted, and she told me she wanted more Barbies. And so I asked Emily, I was like, Well, you already have Barbies. Why do you need more? And she said, Because my Barbies smoke and drink way too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, sure. So I just, I don't know, they're just, they're so much fun and you never know what they're going to say or do next. Brandon, I bear good tidings. I just got you a full-time gig working with me over here at Plant C. As promised, buddy. Now, please go find a toilet lest you shit yourself with joy when I tell you how much you're getting paid. Okay, bye. <laughs> It was really nice so to good to meet you. Thanks. Hey. Hey. Got your beer. Thanks. You know, I really don't like beer. Really? Yeah. Neither do I. At last, the truth. American beers taste like scheisse. Mr. Wooster, I, I don't know what the philosophy of your school is, but my wife and I are big supporters of constructivism. Yes, you know, we really like the notion that the teachers are facilitating the students to interact among themselves, mm. instead of merely lecturing at them and as they sit and become passive listeners. And, and having the students realize that everyone has something to contribute. Everyone has a value. You must have read our website. No, we, we have a son who attended a school that was based on constructivism. And we could not be happier with the way he turned out. Cheers. Cheers. I think you made a very good impression. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Keep it up. <laughs> and by the way, your in-laws are fabulous. <laughs> yeah, they're Oh, something. my daughter's here. She's visiting from Morgantown. Hi, honey. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Oh, Charlotte Conroy, I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Anais, and her husband, Stephen. Hi there. <laughs> Stephen. So predictable. Sex, missionary position. Ah! Asshole. It's a pleasure to meet you. Purse is in the dishwasher. Mother, this is wonderful. So lovely what you put together here. Grilled shrimp? I guess it must have taken you a very long time to drive back from Rwanda. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, would you excuse me? Hey, honey. Oh, look at that. Let's go for a walk. Hey, you feeling okay? Do you want to play doctor? Okay, Charlotte, what is going on there? I forgot to feed my cat. Oh, boy! Charlotte, talk to me. Charlotte? Hey! Brandon! What the hell are you two doing here? Came to help Charlotte. This is very important to her. We know. We know everything. That's why we've come here. We don't want you to make a terrible mistake and throw away your soul partner before the cosmos Whoa, is... Wait a second. Wait a minute. Are you too high? Brandon. Of course we are. Oh my god. 
You don't think that we would turn up to something like this straight? We've been fighting these people our entire lives with their bourgeois pretentious. And ain't no bleaching. Would you folks care for some conflict-free Yugon Archo confit on Lardo Brush Cristini? No! I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Conroy? How's the new bride? Couldn't be better. Do I sense trouble in paradise? Not now, Stephen. Charlotte, this isn't you. What? What do you mean? I'm so sorry. I hurt you very badly. And your life has taken an ugly turn. I apologize. And you obviously married the first guy you met after me. Where was it? Dating website? Singles bar? Old Navy? No! eBay. Good God. <laughs> You bought a husband online? No, we met online and then fell in love and got married. And not after 14 years, Stephen. Look, not all the changes are bad. The clothes, uh, hair. Do you think about me, Charlotte? Because I think about you. Of course I think about you. We spent half our lives together. Song. The whale song, the mating cry of the humpback. Let's get you in the house, mother, and you can take a nice little nap. Oh, Harry! Let's go, mother. Oh, I miss your father so much. Stephen. Yes. You were such an asshole. Is that all it took? You want me now that I am with someone else? There's more to it than that, Charlotte. Oh yeah, really? Like what? And you better be quick, because my husband is right outside that door. And so is your wife, that poor woman. I mean, you don't even understand. Anais, she, she is so spontaneous and unpredictable. One minute we are snowboarding in Telluride, the next we are making love in a Mexican agave field. I miss your predictability. I miss the quiet, boring times, the unimaginative sex, all of it. I'd never appreciated it until it was gone. Well, it's never coming back. Ever. I, 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 I just got a new job in DC. Let's leave these two horrible, disgusting mistakes behind and get back to our old lives. My husband is not a mistake. Yes. We rushed into marriage and things haven't been perfect and after 10 ridiculous days, things are just blowing up in our faces, but there have been moments in between all of the lies and the bullshit where I have loved him more than I've ever loved anybody in my entire life, including you. So, it's over. Perfect. No, Stephen. Hey, I dare you to kiss me one more time and tell me you don't love me. Oh, fuck. Sorry, Steven, but as we say in the yard, I gotta do me. So fuck all y'all if you can't appreciate it. <laughs> Mr. Wooster, I want to apologize for earlier. My wife threw her back out and I was giving her an adjustment. Anyway, we really love the school and we would like to make a small donation. I don't see how that's going to make any difference. This is very generous. Thank you very much. I'm going to find Mrs. Newton and tell her the good news. Wasn't that check for Brandon? Our son's not very good with money anyway, so it doesn't matter. An investment in her future. Is an investment in their future. You mean we sit in there? Yes. No. Maybe. I... I don't know. Hey. Hey. Wow. Looks like you could use a little first aid, my friend.
All hail, all hail the chosen one. Who said that? Tis I, my lord, Hegemonius Kando of the Nexus Six Facing Guild. I have traveled nearly 12 parsecs to find you. Ah. Uh, okay. You are the rightful heir to the throne of Nargathus, the Star Child as foretold in our prophecies. A magnificent creature of unlimited wisdom and breathtaking physical perfection. Yeah. I get that. The great epiphany is at hand. Reveal your magnificence to the members of the Culver City Charter School Board. And then the world! Let them kowtow at your feet. Worship you! Tremble at your unlimited power! <laughs> I must tell you how delighted we all are about the substantial donation from your in-laws. Well, they are very surprisingly generous people. Well, I can tell you there's a lot we can do with those funds. Loyal subjects! I am your unicorn king! By the powers vested in me through the flames of Azanoth, I command you, kneel! Kneel before your unicorn king! That guy's fucking crazy! The time is nigh! The season is in bloom! I call upon you, subjects, to step forth and harvest this royal seed! Stephen! What the hell are you doing? Fair Anais, Stephen is no more. Your milk has soured. Look upon me as I raise the Imperial Scepter! Mommy, that man is nasty! Prepare to receive me! Freezing Drexak? That had to hurt. <laughs> and as I was saying. Could you come in on Monday? Oh, we would be honored to have a young woman of your character at Culver City Charter. Oh God, I would love to. Thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> what in the world got into Steven? I don't know. Any ideas? Food poisoning, perhaps? I think the artichoke confit looked a little sketchy. Since there's no dispute over assets or property, just sign and it's done. You'll never have to see one another again. That line right there, one with your name next to it. I know. On second thought, I, uh, I want the Chinese rocket statue. All righty. Uh, if you agree, Mr. Conroy, we're done here. No. No, I can't part with that. Well, what if you all share joint custody? Each of you take it for a week or two at a time. No, that won't work. Can't you just buy a second statue? That way you all can each have your own. No. No, it's one of a kind. Well, bless your hearts. Now, I don't mean to be rude, but I gotta be getting out to Malibu and having lunch at Girard's. Try the lobster, it's delicious. And not cheap. Can we please get this thing going? Hey, don't rush our divorce, man. Yeah. You know, maybe we should get lunch, too. Yeah. I, I mean, we shouldn't sign this on an empty stomach. Right. Now hold on a second, what about your signatures? Damn it to hell, the wheels are coming off the wagon. This divorce is falling apart. It's I blame it's her. Fault. And you're not stopping me. And so concludes our story.
Poor Charlotte and Brandon. Their journey has taught them nothing. <gasps> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Did I slap you too hard? Nein, baby. It's just right. Friesen Drecksack! Friesen Drecksack! <laughs> Found each other far from home Without a shelter from the cold And we took each other in our arms For everything that we own Now I know I couldn't go it alone Now I know Though it's such a winding road Traversing what cannot be known Time was bought a game Played it while I watched you grow Now I know We couldn't play it alone Now I know I couldn't go it alone Summer's come and winter's go Years are going by and oh My bones are getting sleepy But I keep on keeping on Cause you know
of my dreams and I'm in love. Schweizer Polizei, zeigen Sie mir, was Sie in Ihrer Tasche haben. Ich spreche nicht Deutsch. Wie votre poche, s'il vous plaît. Je ne parle pas français. I see you understand sign language.